Welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I will help you optimizing your piano technique. We will be analyzing the efficiency of piano playing in the broken octaves, but also in some chords. And at the end of the video, I will share with you my thoughts on why do composers ever use this martellati and what's the musical meaning and purpose of them. And a small spoiler, it's not in order to kill your hands. So let's start. There are two very important efficiency concepts that I'm going to share with you within this video. And as a musical example, let's take Sonata uh, Pathetic by Beethoven Opus 13. For example, this part. In order to play that left hand smoothly, we have to understand two concepts, two efficiency concepts. The first one is a proper weight transfer from finger to finger. What does it mean? So in order to hit the fifth finger, I don't use just finger, I don't move my finger down, but I just get some stability in it, get in tension in this muscle. That assures that I have a stable knuckle. But then I deliver the finger to the key not using that muscle. I just keep it stable. I just keep it slightly tense. But I use a rotational movement for that. In this case, counterclockwise. And then, as soon as I proceed to the thumb, I transfer the weight that is now on the fifth finger to the thumb, also using rotational movement, now clockwise. In other words, I just walk from finger to finger, transferring the weight really quickly. If this is something new for you, I would suggest you to practice really slowly and really trying to feel what happens in your hand and trying to release each finger when it's done. So when I step on the fifth finger using this rotation, I release the thumb, I release the right part of my hand palm. As soon as I focus my right hand palm and proceed to the thumb, I have stability in that finger, but that part of the hand, my left part of my hand palm is released right now. And most probably you will need to play that pretty slow so you would be able to proceed all this and observe carefully that you are getting rid of tension in the fingers that are done. But nevertheless, if we, even if we do that, it doesn't mean that we will play that obviously smoothly and without tension. Because for example, I will follow in my own advice now. I transfer the weight from finger to finger properly, releasing the rest, but I still feel tense. This is because my wrist is in a tense position, it's blocked. So in order to fix that, I have to be able to release my wrist and to feel some flexibility in it. And for that purpose, I suggest you to, to practice this martellati in a smaller groups, for example, in groups of three notes, transferring the weight from finger to finger, as uh, was mentioned before, but within one wrist movement, down, up. So your wrist goes down, you lean toward the first note and go up on, this, on the last note of the group. Important, when you reach the end of the group, when you play the last note of it, don't pull away the finger. That would be wrong, because in this case you get tense. Just release the finger quickly, pulling up the forearm, not even the wrist, but just the forearm. Just imagine that somebody is doing that to you. It's actually helpful to practice like that when you uh, work on release in the hand just release your fingers and allow another hand to kick your um, working hand away from the keyboard and check whether you have tension if you feel any kind of resistance it means that you are not releasing properly as soon as you feel comfortable with that using one wrist movement down and up you can play it in the other direction leaning on the thumb and then going away on the second thumb, down, up, like that. Making sure that you release your fingers really quickly and properly after each group. Then we play five notes uh, within one group, but still using just one wrist movement. So fingers inside the hand palm, you transfer the weight, but your wrist unites the smaller movements going down and up within one group, then oppositely, like that. 
And then when you reach the stage when you can play even longer groups, you slightly bounce with the hand. Going, some notes will be played while going down with the wrist and some while going up. That allows me to not lose in stability in the knuckles, but nevertheless release the wrist and feel in that necessary flexibility in it. Of course, you will minimize this movement, so they are not going to be big. First, when you just try to master, just try to grasp that sensation, I would suggest you uh, exaggerate those movements just for practice and purposes, like that. So those are exaggerated movements, of course. When you will be playing that longer line, you will have to optimize them and minimize them to the extent when they almost would not be visible. Mm. So now you might notice something since I told you that, but if you would just observe my playing without my uh, comments, you would not even pay attention to those movements, so small they are, but nevertheless they are making a huge difference. Such wrist movements help tremendously in a shorter martelletti, like for example, in Schumann, uh, Papillon. Mm. Like in this spot, optimizing my movements, my wrist movements, and transferring the weight between fingers and playing the whole group within one motion might help to get rid of any possible problems in this spot. So what's happening here? I transfer the weight between fingers, but I also use a movement down with the wrist. Down. And then when I reach that accented note, I just stand on it, pushing my forearm slightly forward and allowing my knuckle, and as well as my wrist, going higher. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So there are two motions, rotational motion and vertical motion in the wrist. Of course, the, then of course you will minimize them, so again they will be very close, but nevertheless powerful enough to make a huge difference. Let's have a look on a more complicated martelletti, when you have to uh, play this martelletti not just between 5 and 1, but when you have a chord and the note played with the fifth finger, for example, like in the Valet Doberman by Franz Liszt, like for example in this spot. <laughs> That's pretty uncomfortable because you have a wide position, you have a lot of stretch between your third finger and the fifth finger. And the dynamics, 3-4, works of course very confusing here. The music is so loud! So in order to manage that martellata, we have also to consider a couple of things. First of all, we have to spread our fingers. So quite often I see people trying to manage that martellata, keeping their third finger on the wider part of the white key, like that. Here you might see how tense is my hand. In, in this position there is absolutely no opportunity for me to release the wrist, to get rid of the tension in the wrist. So for that we have to spread our fingers and let our longer fingers to play further in the keys. In that position I might be able to use gravity better, thanks to the rotation. And also in that position, I might be still be able to find some freedom in the wrist. Not much, but still enough to get rid of, of a good amount of tension. But nevertheless, even following both of these uh, efficiency strategies that I was speaking about, it might happen that one day won't be enough uh, for you to build this new skill, because when we try to build new skills, Quite often we need more practicing sessions, we need to sleep on it and we, we need to let our body to get used to this new skill. That's why please don't be upset if you are not able to get off tension within one practice session. But what is very important is to give your body time and opportunity to get used to this. Learning that not through tension, not trying to break through those difficulties, but finding your, you know, 
user-friendly way to manage them. So for master such uncomfortable tremoli, I would suggest two practicing strategies. The first one, playing them very fast, but in the shorter groups, as I explained before. So just three notes within one wrist movement, very precise fingers that release keys exactly when they are done immediately, just releasing the fingers very quickly. And then opposite way, that's more complicated actually. Then when you feel that you can get rid of tension immediately, you make that group longer, like five notes. Immediately releasing the hand afterwards. So you play in a real tempo, following shorter groups, giving your hands enough time to release after each group. And then if you want to play that through, like practicing the whole bar, you just play it slower in a tempo that allows you to play without tension. <laughs> And so on. So you give yourself just a comfortable tempo in which you can really control that you don't have, don't accumulate any tension. So if you will urge for comfort in your uh, practice and you will feel how in the course of a few days your body will feel more and more comfortable within this spot. So at the end you will be able to play it and fast and without tension. Another thing to consider here that although we have three four uh, there is always a limit of speed if we want to play very uh, loud. So we either play very loud on piano or very fast, but we don't play very loud and very fast. That's not healthy and <laughs> this is exactly, uh, uh, that's not healthy and in most of cases it also sounds horrible. But horrible agonizing music! So in this particular spot, this fortissimo, would rather correspond to the left hand that has all these dramatic uh, events. While in the right hand, of course in the right hand you have kind of a machine gun, but this machine gun is working at the background. In the foreground you have some glorious fighting uh, on knives, <laughs> let's say so. It means that you don't really need to play that extremely loud, you would rather play that relatively light, allowing your left hand to take the initiative and present this material with a lot of passion. Because otherwise, if that right hand would sound as loud as the left hand, it won't sound really rich, it won't sound like a stereo, it would sound like a mess. So you don't want that, you still want to uh, build the layers of the piece according to their significance, artistic significance. But let's return to the tone because there is still a couple of things that I have to say about this martellati. So why the composers use this martellati? Why they use this compositional device? And the answer is because all these perpetuum mobile ostinato rhythms, they pump an enormous amount of energy into peace and make you feel really energized. So in this case, we really feel energized, we, we really feel electricity of that spot. Just compare how it would sound if we would have an accompaniment like... So that's just another music, it sounds very different and it sounds not as tense. And in order to provide that tension, in order to help the composer convey that huge amount of electricity. There are two things to consider. First of all, even if I would follow all the devices mentioned in this video, but if I would go deeply into the keys, it still won't sound energizing enough. So it still sounds quite heavy, quite grounded. This is because I go very deeply into the keys and play it rather legato. So in order to make it truly energizing, I have to play closer to the surface of the keys because, because a funny fact that probably not all of you know that the point of the sound occurs not at the very bottom of the key, not here, but slightly before. So actually, in order to hit the string, 
I not obviously have to go to the bottom of the key. Although we work with the bottom of the key a lot in order to benefit our expressivity and to improve the control over the keyboard, but nevertheless, in, in spots like these ones, I would not recommend that because that would make your uh, playing heavy and sound like legato. So as you see, avoiding diving too deeply in the keyboard. Make it sound more crispy, make it sound more precise and rather non legato than if I go deeply to the keys. Because this part reminds me rather of a technology inspired uh, modernist pieces like Toccata by Prokofiev. That ostinato, that permanent rhythm, smaller rhythm, taka, 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 brings an enormous amount of uh, energy here. That's why another tip that is very important for, for us ostinati like these ones is avoiding too many impulses. Because if I would play like. Mm, which unfortunately uh, one may hear quite often. This doesn't work and you clearly hear that it doesn't sound convincing. This is because I was using impulses every crotchet, every quarter note in the in the beginning. And then when the material changes, even worse, I was using impulses twice per bar. And this is exactly what makes your performance very heavy and rather amateur. So we want avoiding that. And for that, we not just follow all those efficiency tips that I was sharing with you properly, transferring the weight to the thumb, enforcing the thumb in the same way as we enforce the fifth finger. But also, of course, we need to use our ears a lot, listening to the result and adjusting some things if we hear that some notes uh, sound louder than others. Please check out my comprehensive video courses dedicated to specific pieces below following the link in the description. If you want a personalized advice on your piano playing and uh, would like to have an online lesson with me, please follow the links below in order to contact me. I hope that this video was helpful. Please subscribe, like it if you like it and see you next time. Have fun playing piano.